and welcome to part A of Lab Activity 11, the lab activity covering scatter plots. By the end of this part of the lab activity, you're going to understand how graphics are built using R's base system. You're going to be able to create a proper scatter plot, and you're going to remember the three realms of the graphics code. In fact, by the end of this part of the lab, you're going to build a graphic that looks an awful lot like this. Now notice this is not Lab 3 compliant. We'll deal with Lab 3 compliance in Part B, and we'll also add some other annotations to this graphic in Part B, including coloring the dots individually, which should be rather exciting. And so let's go ahead and start R. Um, of course, this is the Windows version. The Mac people know how to do this. As usual, we'll uh, change the directory to the working directory. I'm not going to do this, but make sure that you do. Make sure that you have already created a new directory for this activity. Go ahead and call it Activity 11, and keep it in your Lab Activities folder. Um, yeah, For this Lab Activity, we're going to eventually load the Religion data set. So I'm going to tile vertically. There we go. Load the Religion data set, first of all. Um, it's in the usual place. I'm going to call it R-E-L-I-G for no reason. DT is going to work just as fine. I'm going to run that, make sure that I can actually do it. I seem to have a problem here. Ah, uh, yes, that should be a period instead of a slash. See, I will see this error quite often because I type poorly. Um, it just means that I mistyped something up here. So let me rerun that, and it worked. Now I'm going to do an attach of relig. It's attached. Now I want to learn about this religious data set or this religion data set. And there's two ways that I can do it. I can do the names command, which is new for us. What the names command does is just tells us the variables that exist in this data set. And it's state, st, attendance, income, vote, and census 4. That may be helpful if all you need to learn about is what the names of those variables are. Or, which we've seen several times, we can type in summary of relig and get not just the names of those data, uh, names of those variables, but also uh, some summary statistics on them. Um, we notice that state and st are identifier variables. State is the name of the state, which includes District of Columbia here, and ST is the two-letter abbreviation. We see that attendance and income, variables 3 and 4, are numeric. Attendance is the weekly or proportion of people in the state who, state who say that they attend services weekly. Income is the gross state, capita, gross state product per capita. It's a measure of average wealth. We have two categorical variables. We have the dichotomous variable vote, which indicates who the state eventually cited for in the 2012 election. Blue means that the state voted for Barack Obama, the Democratic candidate. Red means the state voted for Mitt Romney, the Republican candidate. And of course, the census for, which tells us which region of the country the state is in, Midwest, Northeast, South, and West. That census 4 is rather familiar to us. Note the spellings and the abbreviations. And the reason I said note the spellings and the abbreviation is because by now you've learned spelling matters, which includes capitalization. So let us start with a ugly utilitarian scatter plot. If you recall from lab 2, the important command to create a scatter plot is plot. If you also recall from uh, lab 2, in order to do a scatter plot, you have to give it at least two variables, a variable of x values and a variable of y values. Now, R is kind of flexible in to how you give it. You can either do it as x comma y, where it's the x variable comes first, followed by a comma, then the y variable, or you could do it as y tilde x. Um, as far as plotting, they're essentially the same. Um, they do have different options available, but as far as plotting goes, 
as far as we're concerned, they're the same. So looking at this in terms of x comma y, income comma attendance, looking at this in terms of y tilde x, these two lines should give exactly the same plot. Let's run the first, move it over here, keep an eye on it as I run the second, notice nothing changed. I'll run the first, I'll run the second, I'll run the first, I'll run the second, I'll run the second, no, I guess that was the first, I'll run the second, notice nothing changes, they give the exact same plots, which is important in a lot of ways because this allows you to plot in the way that you think either as the dependent variable depending on the independent variable which is the second way or as x comma y. Now that we've got a basic plot let's go ahead and make the plot look a little bit better than this. You already know how to change the axis labels and the plotting points to solid dots. Uh, solid dots are plotting character number 16 um, and we can change the x labels and the y labels so let's go ahead and do that next. Um, the write-up does it for the plot in terms of x comma y. I'm going to do it here in terms of y tilde x, just to again emphasize that there's little difference between the two. So pch equals 16 uh, makes the dot solid. And I'll do an x lab, change the name of the x label to mean income. And remember, uh, units come in brackets. I may run out of room for Y lab, so I'll go ahead and hit enter and tab to get to the next line. And let's see what we get just from that. Control R. Make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. Mean income, weekly church attendance. A lot of dots there. Let's see how that compares to our goal plot. A lot of dots, solid dots, solid black dots, mean income in dollars, weekly church attendance. Now it looks like we just have to change the limits on the x-axis to go from 30,000 to, that looks like 75,000. And the limits on the y-axis to go from 0 to 1. Since the y-axis is a proportion, it makes sense to show it from 0 to 1. So let's change both of those. Now let's see if that works. Okay, so we got dots, they're kind of small, going from 30 to 75, mean income 0 to 1. How does that compare? Other than this is bigger, it looks about the same. In fact, it is the same, except for the size. How can we make this look bigger, or how can we make this look bigger? New command that you may want to use, it's in the par family, CEX. C stands for character, EX stands for expansion, so this is character expansion. Character expansion of 1 means you don't change the size of the character expansion, or size of the character. Character expansions greater than 1 give you bigger plots. Character expansions less than 1, but greater than 0, give you smaller. So CEX equal 1.5 will give you dots and everything that's 50% bigger. So that's bigger, and that's everything bigger. So that's an interesting thing to add. Let's see, that looks much closer. It's kind of cool. And that's really where we're going to end up. Notice again that we do not have a Lab 3 compliant plot. That's OK. We'll take care of that in Part B. Um, in Part B, we're going to find some more parameters that we can set for this graphic. We're going to discover ways of annotating the graphic. And that annotation is going to also include coloring individual dots or coloring groups of dots. And if you look back at the summary, vote is blue and red. We're actually going to color the blue states blue and the red states red. And that may help us better understand the relationship between weekly church attendance 
and mean income. So, until Part B, take care.